So the idea is that we're going to go over and review Mythic Plus gameplay, okay? Right now, it's currently just my VOD. It could be end up being other people's VODs. If people want to send me their VODs for review, it's fine. But I'm going to go through Mythic Plus dungeons. I'm going to review affixes, routes, poles, stakes, situations, things that you could do better, things that you could improve upon, or things that, you know, you just did great. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's the plan here, and I kind of want to make it a series. I kind of want to take this another level. And I want to do it on stream. I kind of want people to experience and see Mythic Plus on a higher level while also kind of having educational aspects to it. I still want to do guide videos, but I think this is just a really cool idea. And I think we can do a lot of things. Yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. I think it, I think it'd be really cool, really interesting. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know if I'm going to comment it. Yeah, it's like coaching. It's like coaching. It's exactly, yeah, it's exactly it. I just, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do commentating properly, but let's give it a shot let's roll into it who knows it could be amazing you know what i mean you know what i'm saying <laughs> so for this key here we've got 33 upper city currently in the party is me as tank i'm using thunderclap undaunted tank if i remember correctly from this party here we had cal as a hot healer so they were seed of lights hots tixu young pumper and dtk were all running uh like coj paladins or Paladin DPSs. Uh, stagger, uh, staggers all damage, but yes, I believe it does deal magic damage to the uh, tank. So right now we're just pulling out uh, the Fire Guard Champion. We want to keep this out of the pole of the room so that we have more room. Uh, this week's affixes that we're kind of dealing with, chat, is we're dealing with. Oh gosh, I gotta remember all the fucking affixes. We've got Life Steal. We've got Corpse Explosion. We have. What else are we dealing with this week? Uh, Pack Tactics and fortified would sacred cleansing talent lower its damage i don't know pesty we'll have to test it out so when it comes to like this, these kind of things like the main thing is just to keep the party stacked together as much as possible including the healer if the healer can through majority of the mechanics uh so far i've only found the only dungeon that you don't want to have the healer stacked in for the most part is actually service entrance and even service entrance the keys that i've run uh this week specifically uh, we've actually even kept the healer in the packs because a lot of times you have a COJ DPS that's off healing to help uh, smooth out problems. Uh, not too much here right now. We're just mostly just clearing the packs uh, to open up the door so we can get through. Uh, when it comes to the other affixes, Corpse Explosion, the most it's honestly the biggest thing is the DPS. So if you're a DPS player and you're dealing with Corpse Explosion, constantly just keep your character angled off. You'll notice that with Corpse Explosion, it's going to go off on five seconds and zero seconds. So just don't puke on your tank. The two important things, don't puke on your tank, don't puke on your healer. If you accidentally puke on a DPS, it's not the end of the world. Mainly because, <laughs> there me, I charged, I blinked forward on accident. Completely terrible idea. As a tank, I ended up taking isolated damage. I didn't have any pack tactics on me and almost died for it. I had to pop cooldowns to survive. Uh, but yeah, puking on tanks, because tanks can't negate the damage. Affix damage, actually right now in Ascension, cannot be negated. So even if a tank has damage negation up, pukes will still do the flat 1. Point, I think it's like 1.4k damage per puke. And if you puke on a uh, caster, it interrupts their cast. Uh, for healers, for corpse explosions, just try to keep uh, either like a hot up or keep your burst spell cast on as soon as the explosion's about to happen. Instantly like top the party's back to full, especially against champions. Champions this week, you're crazy. Okay, Eli. Uh, when it comes to champions, though, like, they're the most ridiculous thing. Because champions, how, how Corpse Explosion works is, depending on if it's a mob or a, or a boss, it has a percentage of its health converted into an explosion. <laughs> Eli, thank you so much for the 20 gifted subs. <laughs> you're crazy. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I, I can't say those congratulations at the moment, but thank you. Um, when it comes to Corpse Explosions, though... Some of the important things that are happening here. Uh, our champions have a really high health pool. And because they're a mob, they're doing a high amount of damage that are going on. And because of that, you really want to be careful when dealing with the damage with them. All right. I think we got some downtime in between the pulls. So yeah, <laughs> that's crazy, Eli. <laughs> Thank you again for the 20 gifted. All right. Have a good, have a good night. Uh, when it comes to Upper City, the biggest challenges that Upper City has... Can I, is that actually currently playing on stream i can't tell or if the notification is just on my end uh when it comes to upper city here is the fire uh the fire destroyers 
these mobs right here can destroy your tank super quickly. So we grab two. Uh, right now as a tank, I've got some good cooldowns up and ready to go to take off any type of damage. Uh, the group has some really good damage output. Like right now, if you notice, like our DPS are all pretty pumping up to 4k high. Uh, which is really nice to try and time 30 keys. It also gives you a good window for any type of mistakes if anything crashes. The problem here is, is that this is a really bad spot for, for this week's champions. So Frost champions, as, as we just saw there, uh, spawn orbs around you, on the, around them. And when you, when you get hit by these orbs, these orbs actually end up doing a lot of frost damage. And if you're not topped up when a, when a champion dies, it can, it can wipe the entire group. Now that one there though, I don't think was the cause of it. I think people got hit by orbs and a normal, uh, version mob exploded because champions, once they hit a certain percentage health, actually go into an ice tomb and regain health until you do 30 K damage to them. So because of that, I don't think it was the champion that we wiped you. I think we just wiped actually to a normal destroyer i'm pretty sure we still time this key and we do most of the standard routing if not we'll go over it and we'll we'll talk about it as the kind of run continues uh but one thing just to keep in mind is like a wipe is okay especially on these type of keys if you're just trying to time it don't stress out about a wipe wipes you have plenty of time the the game is very generous when it comes to times if by any chance you're trying to two chest or three chest, a single white will 100% or not 100%, but you know, greatly impact that, making it so you have a way less chance for it. So we're getting back here. Uh, the Beyblades actually are the new 30 affixes. You just, just dodge the Beyblades. Uh, GTK failed to dodge the Beyblade. <laughs> Blink's super helpful for that if you're trying to dodge them. They don't do a whole lot other than that. You just kind of walk around them, but there are some really annoying spots. So we're waiting for the, the destroyer by himself and we're going to pull him isolated and just take him on by himself here. So the frost door is active. So we have to constantly be moving or jumping up. That's why the party here is jumping and he's going to keep spawning orbs. So we have to dodge these orbs or get hit by them. So Tixu and Pampa just got hit by an orb, big damage. And that's okay. There, there's going to happen, especially in these tight corners in certain dungeons, just make sure as the healer, that you've got the party top and that the DPS do not kill the boss or kill the fire guard or the champion in general before everyone is fully topped. Because otherwise you will wipe the group. And right there, <laughs> instantly a champion explosion can destroy a party. So the group's now dead. We're just trying to resummon everyone. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, this these frost orbs actually, <laughs> they keep floating around us and prevent us from rezzing. So watch as I summon Cal and he ends up dying. So be careful where you're standing. I, I should be moving right now. <laughs> and instead I'm just constantly rezzing them to their death. I'm pretty sure Tixu dies too. <laughs> and then I'm like, wait, I'm going to die now. And then I end up dying for it. <laughs> Definitely some bad luck on that part. There's not much you can really do there. Uh, you can't move it too far back. Normally you could move it back, but because of the, uh, Beyblade, it's hard to move it completely back. I try to sneak past the dogs. I end up dying. So I have to run it back again. Pretty sure I waste cooldowns here when you shouldn't do. Just let yourself die. You're wasting more time. I'm wasting time by doing this. When in reality, I should just let myself die. Especially because the DPS or the healer didn't know that I was, uh, getting killed. So now I'm just waiting for the dogs to finish their reset and patrol so I can actually make it. And now I can run back safely. Now, when it comes to the next pulls that are coming up here, you've got the next two double destroyers. It's definitely a tough pack. Good to have cooldowns for. The next pack after, though, is actually probably one of the worst packs in the entire dungeon. It's usually recommended, at least in my opinion, to try and skip it if you can. Uh, they added all the boons back in, so you usually have a couple boon options to choose from before going into it, which is nice. So yeah, again, destroyers, really tough problem. Definitely should have used Mocking Blow. I was being greedy with defenses, didn't think I would need it. We end up wiping because of this. The, the most important thing, though, kind of going back to like I said, it's okay to wipe. This key ends up still getting timed. We have a ton of damage. 
having DPS that can pump out 4K plus on every pull kind of just gets you through keys. It's 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 actually doable. So a lot of running back through this death row. Now I think we still skip uh, after the fire guards. Which is definitely the route you should do. If you can sell, skip it with potions or with uh, phase block. It is definitely the best way to do it for time saving. Because you don't need the percentage and the mobs themselves are really strong. So I lead it off with mocking blow at this point because I said, screw it. You know what? I don't want to die. These mobs really hurt. Let's just get mocking blow going because screw these. These are, these are just ridiculous. So yeah, let's see what we end up deciding to do. Now, some parties will choose to go down and deal with, I think his name's Fire, uh, Fire Forge. Wait, let me see here. So, okay. So yeah, some parties will go over this side here and they will end up going to do Fire Forge. Now there's, there's two reasons to do this if you're ever considering it as a party. I personally don't like this option. The main reason for it is that there's more Fire Destroyers and Fire Destroyers are literally the worst mob for any tank to fight. And I hate them, so I personally like to avoid it. But there is a boon down there. There is a boon down there that you can take, and boons are fantastic. And it also removes a boss out of the pool. So you don't that means you can skip an extra boss. You don't have to kill all the bosses uh in the bread that we're about to do. Uh my group opts to not do this pack. Uh personally, but it is an option there for those that don't that like want to get it, get the boon. Uh this this video when it was recorded did not have the boon. So even if we wanted to go that route, it's just not worth it. But moving forward, boons are in now. So boons are definitely an option for you. Yeah, so we're going to stealth uh, potion. Now, we make a really stupid mistake here. If I go back slightly. So when we're talking about the potions and whatnot, let me see if I actually see it. Okay, so I don't see it. So it's not technically a fault of myself. So what we were talking about is when we start running here. So right here, there is on 30s and higher, there is a Beyblade. And the Beyblade spins around this entire area. So right now, there's like a spinning blade of death that's spinning around in circles that kind of like goes in between the entire area. It kind of just keeps spinning around. So when you go invisible and you drink invis potions, you can't see it. But it's still in the physical plane, and it will still hit you. So if we watch this here. DTK and me both get hit. End up getting killed because of it. I noticed this, so I blink forward because I see that they're still invisible. And let myself die. Thus getting us out. They're able to actually res me now because I do the blink and, and save myself that time. But yeah, absolutely, whenever you're doing cell skips, be careful of these Beyblades. These Beyblades are very dangerous. And um, yeah, just make sure you know what you're doing beforehand. I definitely should have checked to see where it was because we were talking about it. And I wasn't cluing in that walking that way was going to lead me to my death. So we're waiting for DTK to come back. Again, destroyers in these pulls. Pretty annoying. Just be careful. Make sure your group stack. Pack tactics is really important. Can save you a lot of hassle. Normal, just clear the destroyers. I would never pull them grouped together. Definitely not. So what we're going to do in the next room, though, is we're going to go for four bosses. And there's some good route. Again, terrible mistake on my part as a tank. I blink forward. Wasn't with pack tactics. I let them hit me in the back. I end up taking like 12,000 damage right off the top. Completely terrible. Luckily, our team's really good. Keeps us alive, able to res. So we're not screwed because if we wipe there, we weren't going to be able to stealth back unless someone brought an po extra potion for us. So good save on the team here. So again, we're just waiting for the, the reses. Hey, Kiko, how's it going? We're just doing some uh, Mythic Plus review right now. Welcome to the stream. Hope you enjoy your stay. Okay. 
I'm doing good. I'm doing good. We just got off work. We're uh, looking to do a few hours. We're trying some new things on stream tonight. See how they go. Okay, so we attempt to fire destroyers again for a second time. Dan is a tank. 100% just don't be gingerly on your defenses when dealing with destroyers, in my personal opinion. Destroyers just do tons of magic damage. Better just use defenses on these. These are like the worst mobs ever, especially on Fortified Weak. Now, when you come into this room, so what we're going to do here as a group is we're going to do two things. So the when I say we're going to do four bosses, the goal here is that we're going to deal with Ribley. And there's a boss in here that you can break kegs and do two bosses. So we plan on doing double bosses. Uh, the other thing that we plan on doing is we need to clear out this trash and this trash so that we can get Kibley. So we're going to first go and we're going to line a site and then pull them and kill them. Hey, Nisha, I'm doing good. Uh, the game's coming along nicely. We're just reviewing some high mythic pots here. Uh, now, one thing I would recommend, if you, if your group can, and we don't end up doing it here, but to save some time, if you're trying to really save time, like if you're trying to push the, the, this number to like a, pl a plus two key, I definitely recommend having four people go here or, or here and hide behind the wall and have your last member run this way and go up and start the RP to get the the golem bodyguard to start. Because at that point, you should be able to clear the trash with just four people and have the runner join you after. So we go, we go for the line of sight. And then right after this, we should be going for double boss. On pack tactics weeks, make sure to communicate with your DPS and healer to stack with you when you talk to Ribley. I know I did a couple keys this week where they weren't standing on top of me when doing the RP and I ended up taking a lot of damage from Ribley and his crony. And here I am asking for them to stack. <laughs> and I'm like, please, I don't want to die. And then we're going to go into double boss. I think we're waiting until we kill the minions. I think that's the game plan here. Depending on your group, your comfortability, obviously you can start it whenever. Just make sure that your your team's comfortable with it. But huge time save if you're doing both bosses together. You know, it's always amazing just to see some of the, the high DPS like DTK pumping out 8.4k. Uh, another idea that you can do as well, if your group is comfortable with it, is if you didn't have a runner at the start to go do the RP, you could right now, because there's two bosses, most times you've probably stabilized your group at this point, and you can have a runner go and grab the boss, uh, start the RP. Great way to save time again. Uh, by this point here... If you were doing everything, if you're going for every single boon, you could end up having you could have four boons at this point for this boss. You have a boon at the bridge door gate. Again, this this uh this key didn't have the option for all the boons. Uh, it was before the change where they fixed they reverted everything back. But you could have had one at the bridge gate door opening. Uh, when you get to the bridge, if you jump out the window and you go up top, there's another boon there. There's a boon at the first boss that I had talked about previously that you could choose to kill if you wanted to, or at least get the destroyers for the boon. You, then there's a boon at the golem boss that you could sneak to afterwards after you stealth past. And those boons could definitely help with this push too, with the double bosses. These boss fights take forever, though. Even with good DPS pumpers. So now we're going to run up. Because we're going to be doing plugger, because we're trying to get four bosses from here. 
we're going to clear all the Grim Patrons. Great spot to line a site just so that the casters don't hit you. Okay, trying to keep the pulls going. Uh, when you're dealing with COJ healers or COJ DPS, if you ever have one in your group as a tank, you want to keep the poles consistently going. You want to keep them on their stacks. They have a four, they have a fifteen uh, second window to keep their their stacks going. Absolutely important. Uh, it looks like Tixu was not a COJ healer. It looks like it is just DT King and Young Pumper that are being uh, COJ healers to help uh, Cal throughout the process. So now we got to do the RP here, and that's me just figuring that out with everyone. We're like, wait, did anyone talk to the RP? Because if you just kill plugger and you do not do the rp or you haven't pickpocketed him and you don't have the key you actually cannot get through that door that's very important you need to make sure that you do that so we get cal he's gonna go buy all the the beer and then we're gonna start the pull don't do that i've done that before i have locked myself out of this room and had to do a lava skip which is very miserable because we did not do the rp beforehand or pickpocket him if, if someone has that. When it comes to Plugger, uh, I think he's the first boss you have to worry about anything. It's mostly his banish. Make sure you have someone kicking banishes. And if you have someone in a decurse, Curse of Tongues. Because Curse of Tongues is uh, very painful on your casters, especially your healer. So a decurse for that is definitely helpful. If your group's comfortable, you can also pull the golem. I don't strongly recommend it. I've been a, I'm a big advocate for pushing for it with my groups to say, hey, let's double boss it. But um, it's definitely not the the best boss to to like double pull. And the main reason for this is because you need a kicker on plugger or banish. That's just straight up a fact. Like like you can't like you can't let the banishes go off. But with Phalanx, to help lower his damage output, you want to kick his fire. Um, I think it's like fiery firework or something like that. You want to kick that so it doesn't do extra AoE damage to your party. Especially on the hierarchies, just because it, it's going to take everyone down by like 60% of their health. But if you can do it, awesome. If your whole team has kicks and your team's comfortable with kicks. Uh, definitely an extra time saver. Double bossing as much as possible is definitely a great idea. I strongly encourage just trying to push limits and see what you can do best. Uh, again, for this boss, really, you're just trying to kick his one cast. And that's pretty much it the entire time. Actually, is, it, is cast even kickable anymore? He might not even have a kickable cast anymore. I think it's just his thunderclap. Hmm? Yeah, I'm not seeing it casting. So no, ignore me. I'm stupid. You don't kick anything on him. You just need to be ready for all of his AOE bullshit. Hmm? So you can totally double boss this as long as you have good AOE healing to keep yourselves up. And you kick pluggers, uh... Banish. I'm just being foolish, chat. I'm just being foolish. Oh. Okay. So, one thing I really wanted to emphasize on... So, when it comes to this pa this pack here... Is incredibly deadly, especially because there's always gonna be there's gonna be a champion or another destroyer basically that patrols, and he kind of he patrols like he patrols through here. He'll come back and forth between the th this way. Always try and grab these fire guards when the patrol's not there. On lower keys with high enough DPS, you can just jump down. You can pull them. It's not a problem. On the higher keys, I'm actually gonna suggest what we do right here on our group. Which is grab them and then bring them back inside. It's just going to be safer. If the fight goes on long enough, you're not going to have to worry about the, the champion coming into your fight. 
it can it can save you a wipe on a really tough pull. <laughs> I messed up the jump. Definitely a messy pull. I fell down and then failed to jump back up and got Frost Nova. I almost got myself killed. Good recovery, though. We were able to get in, regroup before it. The Thankfully, I got the Thunderclap off and aggroed everything and then blinked away so that they still chased me and not our DPS. And then got into the pack tactics beforehand and preemptively used deterrence to try and keep myself up. Now, there's two things that you can do here, and it's all depending on how you have. So, if you could, you can try and dodge the destroyer. If the pathing lines up properly, you can run forward, grab the other packs, and run down inside the tunnel. Do line of sight them to keep away from the champion. The only problem is, is when you're on a 30 or higher, there's now a blade blade in that tunnel. And if you try to run down that tunnel and you're not prepared for the bay blade... It can get some people stuck and killed while the guys are running down after you. But a good line of sight definitely helps. Uh, worst case, you can always just kill the champion here. I mean, there's a bunch of frost room. It's pretty fine. It's pretty easy to deal with. There's also a boon that's going to be uh, around here. I'll see if it... I don't think it shows up here right now. I don't think it's in this week. But you can opt to go for it. I tend to not to, but it is definitely a good option in some cases because getting every boon possible for phase walk is really important. And we'll go over why phase walk is really important here at one point. Okay, yeah, so there is no boon here right now. But there, if you if you clear out this trash and then you clear out this trash here, there's a there's normally a boon right here, and you can take that boon if you want for more boon options. I think both are arguably fine. You're you're going to be over percentage regardless, so you probably don't want an extra trash. But the boon is definitely helpful, so it is definitely something to consider. When it comes to pulling this pack, actually. You got to be careful of the Doom Forge Dragoon. The reason for it is they use explosive shots. If you're not in a certain range of them, they will shoot explosive shots that'll do about like 6k to your DPS. So you either have to be in melee range and keep them out of their range to shoot, or you need to line of sight them so that they don't um, come after your group. Like I'm pretty sure the Dragoon there just shot its explosive shot and almost killed the entire party because I wasn't close enough to it. So you gotta be really careful of these mobs when it comes to those pulls. They can they can one hundred percent wipe your party if you're not prepared for them. So, so here's the Beyblade I was talking about. Again, it's a great option if you know about the Beyblade and you can avoid it. That's on thirties or higher. If it's a thirty or lower, you can get away from it and you have no problems. Here's another boon spot that we can utilize, so we're going to take that. Uh, Ambassador Flame Lash. Really don't have any advice on him, honestly. He's mostly just a tank and spank, in my opinion. Smack him down, take him out, no problem. The next, the next part is kind of interesting. So at this point, if we're assuming you've gone for every single boon, we'll, we'll kind of, well, we're killing this boss. We'll talk about phase lock and why it's important. So in a perfect world, you want two phase locks within the next what, four boons or so. Okay, so you have the first boon that I talked about that was just in the previous room that you can pull the extra pack for. So you take that boon. You've got five boons. There's now the boon behind a flame lash that we took. That's now ten boons. When you head to Panzor, 
there is another boon that you can grab. And I think we do it on this run. If, if we do, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. If not, I'll kind of try and explain it as much as I can visually. Where you can get four more boons. Then there's another set of boons that you can get in the Emperor's Chamber. So that's another five. And at that point, within all those boons, if you've gotten two phase walks, you're golden. If you've gotten one phase walk, it's not as good and you're going to have a time loss. You could if you have Aspect of the Pact. If you have one phase walk at that point, you could run all the way back and Lava Skip right here. You could jump down and Lava Skip down this way and loop around to the other side of the King's Chamber to try and phase walk. And I'll, I'll talk about what we're going to try and phase walk here in a little bit, but just remember that you could do this as an option. So we enter the room and we're checking a few, a few key things. First, we're looking for Panzer. So Panzer is there. That's who we want to kill. The boon is there. Okay, perfect. So this is the boon that I was talking about. This boon here, uh, we do grab. We end up grabbing this boon and four people will get this boon when you grab it. So that's another chance of getting phase walk, which is what we're gambling for right now. We're trying to get phase walk. So right now we should be pulling this pack, but I'm trying to explain to the party that you can actually go and get that boon and that it actually is worth it to kill these packs. Because they're they don't think that we can get it and they're trying to figure understand what I'm trying to explain to them. So if this was a group that was agreeing with the strategy I was talking about. You grab the Molten War Golem in that pack. You kill them. You get Panzer when he comes in. Panzer's a pretty straightforward boss. He really doesn't do a whole lot of damage. It's mostly the spell reflect that you have to be careful about because your DPS can kill themselves. So if, if everything goes smoothly, yep, we're going to pull. We're going to grab the pulls. Nice. You want those Arcane Smiths dead as soon as possible? They die really fast, but they hit really, really hard. So I believe that we're... I don't think we pull again, because I used all my cooldowns there to survive. We took a lot of damage. So right now we're just waiting out for cooldowns, figuring things out, and seeing if we want to pull or if we want to wait until Panzer dies. I think at this point here, based on me as a tank, I've got deterrence, so it's possible that I can make the pull. I do decide to make the call for the pull. So yeah, yeah. As soon as uh, as soon as I pull it, I pop deterrence. We get pans or dead as soon as we do that, and then we went into shadow crash. Great pull. We get the trash down. Now <laughs> this is kind of funny. They're they're trying to figure out if we can actually do it. And I'm trying to tell yes. Don't worry, we can get it. So just so everyone can kind of grasp what we're talking about here. What you're going to do is one person is going to stand right here and you're going to jump up and you're going to click the boon. And when you click the boon that's like hidden like right here, everyone that's in line of sight here will get the boon. You just won't get it yourself. So I tell everyone to get in line of sight. I move. I jump. And I give them everyone the boon. Which is perfect. Now we've got four more opportunities for phase blocks. Now, in this room here as well, there is a boon that should be right in the middle. You should have a boon right here. Boon's not here on this run, but moving forward on every other run, you should now have that boon. So you take that boon. Now there are five free boons easily. And they're going to phase walk through the door. So we, I, like again, you use the phase walk there. Now in saying that, if you had just gotten a boon on those last two boon checks and you only got one phase walk, you can opt to run around the long way and not boon.
if you're absolutely desperate here, you can go for the boon in the middle. Uh, I tried it with one group. It was kind of worth it, kind of not. We got really lucky and we phase walked and made it through. But if we didn't, it would have been a really bad run. So we're popping our boons here. We're just speed rolling. We're trying to get to the door, basically, is the whole point. And when you get to the door, phase walk lets you just go through the door. Which is a huge timer saver. The main reason is because you just you want to avoid the champions. There's three champions in this room. It's absolutely crazy. And you're already like we we're already almost capped on champions. We've already killed so many. So we're basically bringing everything to this door, and then we're just getting a bunch of percentage kills, and then we're just going to go through the door, basically. Now, if I recall, in this run, we actually didn't get a second phase block, and we made a blunder here. So we end up actually um, going through the, the door at different means. Yeah, we're just killing mobs, getting some percentage right now, because this is just free percentage. So we're like, yeah, we'll just murder it. And then everyone's intentionally letting themselves die right now. And this is basically just to get us through the door. Again, should be doing this with phase walk, everyone. If you only got the one phase walk like we did, you really should aspect pack back, loop around, do the three destroyers, and then phase walk through this door. This is not the best example of a way to do this. And it's definitely not something I encourage doing. It does end up happening. You do get groups that do this. But once again, Ascension is probably going to patch this. It's probably not going to be as an intended strategy. But phase walking through the door is a strategy. And skipping three champions worth of mobs is definitely worth it. So on this boss here, this boss is actually super crucial to be important to kick his uh, his cast. So he, he has actually a potential KO here. So he does Fiery Burst. And on Tyrannical Weeks, if this isn't kicked, he can end up actually Fiery Burst, AoE Stun, Fiery Burst, and kill your team. So make sure you've got a rotation on there. Kick his Fiery Burst. Save the AoE damage. Don't stress out your healer. Uh, healer on weeks that are not obviously pack tactics. Try and stay out of the stun in the pack tactics week. If your group's good enough, honestly, I think it's smart enough for you to actually stay in the stun. Just for the fact that the pack tactics boost. Next room is the, uh, the last room we have to deal with. We've got two more champions we got to deal with in the middle of the room. Uh, and there should be actually two boons in that room that you can obtain. For the final boss kind of pull, which is fantastic. It's actually really one of the best places to grab boons, personally. And that would be your kind of final play. That would be the last thing that you're going to do. Uh, ideally, at this point, you've got enough percentage that when you clear that room, you're good to go. I don't... I honestly hate a lot of the pulls in that room. A lot of the mobs are really annoying mages that can one-shot some of your party members if you don't grab them appropriately. So, tend to best to have a more... What's the word I'm looking for? Percentage, so you only have to pull four packs and two champions in that room, and then be done with it. Oh, I muted the audio. I did not mean to do that, chat. I apologize. Like I don't even know if the audio is annoying or not annoying, so like... It might have been actually for the better. I don't know because there's my comms technically still playing in the background of this video. But the audio being muted in general was not the intention. So we pull the champion into the room. Simple enough. We just want the open room space. We want to be able to avoid the frozen uh, orbs as best as possible and kill the champion by himself. And the best way to do that is definitely pull him in, line of sight him, and then fight him in the middle of the room. Now, if you don't need the percentage here, 
what you can do as a party is you can walk straight through the middle and avoid both sides of these these shadow forgers. Now these these two packs I strongly recommend killing, and the reason for it again, not on this week, but on every other week now because the updates. There is a boon that sits right here. You can actually have one of your party members jump up and grab it. And then over on this side here, there's another boon hidden that you can grab. Very important, very helpful to grab both boons in this in this room. I'd clear both sides every time. But these packs are really annoying and really difficult to deal with, so make sure you've got a good group to take them down. Focus the casters. Uh, and I do recall, actually, one of these casters puts an amplifying magic on there to make your one of your members deal take a lot of extra magic damage. So if you have a dispel for that, make sure to dispel that. Otherwise, just kick it and kill it. You can see the boons actually over there right now in the uh, other side of the room. So we're going to travel over there. We're going to take the boon. And Tix was dead, and uh, you can see right now on me as Athena, I actually have the debuff that makes me take extra magic damage. Just to be careful of the Beyblades, because I mean, they just—they literally just killed Tixu from a. Uh... So we'll take the champion. And you've got to pull these last two packs. These last two packs will aggro always with the boss, but the rest of the room will not aggro. So you can get away with not aggroing anything else after this. The good news is we got 13 minutes left. And I think that's one of the biggest crazy things, chat, is we wiped a ton on this key. We made a lot of mistakes. A lot of just, like, small mistakes that punished us. But we're still got plenty of time to time this. Uh, I think we did not get enough percentage, though. I do actually believe after we kill the champion, or the champion, the, the two packs and the boss, we do end up actually pulling a little bit more, if I recall uh, properly. We're at 86%, and I definitely don't think these packs give 86% or 14% in total. Most likely, each pack gives probably about 0.58% per mob, as that's pretty standard for most dungeons. Yeah, like, see, if you look at there, that those pa this pack only literally gave us uh, 2%. That's another 2%. We're going to be at 90. The boss is going to give us probably about 1.15. So we'll, we'll, be, we'll need about another, like, 9 to 8%. Which is fine. We have 12 minutes. We can run back. We can get mobs. It's not a big deal. I think we actually end up even dying and then running from the beginning to pull mobs. Hey, Killer Carnage, how's it going? Welcome to my late night stream. Oh, thanks for the hydration. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to do Emperor. Now, when it comes to Emperor, uh, Cal, as you can see, is our healer is actually at max range. You can see on the minimap, they're a little bit further out with the little dot. Um, the main reason for this is at 30 yards, the Princess and the Emperor will actually stun targets. And if you're a healer, uh, in this circumstance here, they want to see at max range so they don't get stunned. Uh, you could argue them being in melee because of, pack uh, because of pack tactics and having COJ healers to off heal. But if the healer does get stunned, then it's okay. And especially if the healer has bubbles or blinks to get out of it. Just got off work. Nice to hear that, Carnage. That's good. Uh, but it's also perfectly fine for the healer to be at max range and not have to worry about certain aspects. Uh, then they don't have to worry about the mechanic, and they can keep everyone healed, and everyone else in the melee range will be fine. Other than that, you just have to be careful with his Berserk Rage. He doesn't like to do it in a rage mode, does a ton more damage to you as a tank. 
and makes it so like magic damage is he's immune to. Uh, when we kill this boss here, because we need another ten percent, usually in my circumstances here, yeah, I think I think what we end up doing is I'm pretty sure I prematurely use laser, and I'm pretty sure I kill us. The laser is a really good cooldown to use for getting the percentage off the mobs. Uh, the main problem that I think is going to cause us to wipe here, if I recall, is I'm not going to let GTK or Young Pumper get stacked on COJ to be able to off heal, and the mobs just instantly like clean us up. On Corpse Explosion Weeks, I'm pretty sure it's not wise to kill Princess. I haven't killed Princess this week because we've always avoided her. But Princess should have a ton of Corpse Explosion damage. And that's definitely not something you want to have, especially if you don't have your full group stack. So always focus down Emperor on Corpse Explosion Weeks. Oh, at this point here, Cal's talking about the Beyblade that's, like, super close to him. He's a little worried it's going to hit him. All right, perfect. So we kill. We need another 10%, um, basically. So yeah, I make the call. We go over here. We're going to pull this pack. I plan on doing laser, which is going to pull the pack up above. But stacks dropped on Adorn. And because of that, when these packs come down, we have nothing to keep me alive. I should have popped evasion sooner. And we die from it. Again, though, it's fine. We killed the boss beforehand. And to be honest, these packs are pretty annoying. So I thought, again, <laughs> I, I even say it in the, in the recording, that I thought we were fine. But it's not a big deal. We can now just simply pull any part of this area now that we want. And we can get the percentage from the mobs. So we have 8 minutes. We're going to go. We just need 9%. I think we also chose this pack specifically because Tixu had to repair, so he went to Finkel and he got a repair done. Ended up working out for us because we wiped a ton. Which for anyone that didn't know, Finkel is right there where the star is. Uh, again, because of the change that they did to boons this, um, on this patch, the fact that you get all your boons again really will help with times on tough pulls. And give you more options. So definitely utilize them and abuse them. Like boons are fantastic. And like the scarcity of them really makes it so like timers are tight. If we had like the five extra boons that I was talking about. We would have a much higher time. Even with our mistakes. Like the boons just would have sped up a lot of our process in general. But yeah, we choose to do the upper arena part. These packs are fantastic for percentage, so we're just looking to get them killed. Welcome back, Eli. Couldn't sleep. So we'll do the last pack. It'll be enough. And with this, we'll hit 100%, and the key will be basically done. And because I'm pretty sure people know, really like to see it. Let me see if it actually shows. What what did I end up getting for loot? Do I open it up? Do I open it up before the recording ends? I don't know. Okay, I open it. I go for strength. And a 33 unsophisticated hand cannon. Absolutely garbage for me. So it was completely terrible. No good prize. But I really wanted to highlight an upper city run. I thought an upper city would just be 
a really good dungeon to show off because it's a very miserable dungeon and a lot of people don't like it because there's a lot of really annoying packs such as destroyers destroyers are the bane of everyone and there's just a lot of techniques that you have to do to try and avoid a lot of bull crap and i thought it would be nice especially a key that shows that you know even if you fuck up a lot you can still get through it is it the most fun dungeon not really is it the fastest dungeon absolutely not but it is a doable dungeon and it is very forgiving if you're just trying to plus it and get over with it